Hey everybody, my name is Nemo, and let's get another deck build going, right? I'm a little behind on these, so I'm trying to catch up, trying to catch up. Today we're looking at Guardians of Light. And let's see what I've got here. So, 24 land, as mostly usual. Uh, this deck is no exception to the rule that 24 is mostly the right number of lands to play in a deck. One thing important here is to look at how many creatures I'm running. I'm running 19 creatures, 17 other, and 24 land. Uh, I think the 17 other is all enchantments. Let me actually check that for a second here. Yeah, they're all they're all enchantments. So 17 enchantments and 19 creatures. You want to have these numbers close to each other because you want to have a creature and you want to have an enchantment at the very least. So you need both. So you want these numbers to be close to each other so that when you draw the one, you draw the other one as well. Um, but you kind of want a little bit more creatures and enchantments because it is possible that, uh, you know, if the other, if the opponent is playing a removal, then they can remove your creatures and uh, you need a little bit extra creatures just to make sure that uh, you've got enough creatures to go along with those enchantments you're trying to play. Because if he, j he just kills all your creatures the se second you play him, you're going to be stuck with enchantments in hand if the numbers are exactly the same. So... I would opt to have a little bit more creatures than enchantments. Either way, that is basically the general gist of the deck. You need creatures, you need enchantments, and that's what you want to do. So we've got these, this here, the one the one drop in the deck, lifelink, I'm not playing, because uh, you don't really need it, it doesn't really do enough. This deck um, doesn't really like to... This isn't an extremely late game deck that likes to sit around gaining life until it can drop something huge. Um, and the Daybreak Cornets do enough, give me enough lifelink, as well as the Ajani Sun Strikers, that I don't think I want more lifelink. I want some more uh, aggression, basically. I want to be able to turn the game around, and uh, lifelink just doesn't do enough for me. Um, especially not if it's the only enchantment you get to play on your dude. Like then, then it doesn't do much at all. So it's kind of win more in a, in a situation where you have a big dude, um, then you're probably winning because you have a big dude. And in a situation where you don't have a big dude, lifelink doesn't do much because you're not gaining a lot of life with it. Um, and basically, this deck is all about the four drops that uh, close out the game in short order. So we'll get to those though. I was I was kind of debating should I should I show it like should I go to the four drops and be like this is what the deck's about, so we don't want lifelink. But now nah, we'll get there in short order, so no worries. We've got Core Spear Dancer here for the two drops. Uh, this is an amazing card. I don't see a reason ever to not run this in any kind of aura deck. It's just simply exactly what you want. It's a dude, and if you put auras on it, it becomes bigger, and it draws you cards. Um, yep, that is amazing. Definitely want all four of those. We've got Ajani Sunstrikers here. They're just tutus, but they have an ability that is relevant. Um, them having lifelink is, kind of, is pretty relevant, so... You know, if you're if you're making a dude big, then it may as well have a lifelink already on it, rather than have to play an aura to give it lifelink. And uh, the creatures I'm not running here are the Blade of the Six Pride. They are generic guys, they don't have an ability that uh, especially helps out this deck. In fact, they don't have an ability at all. So, um, the other two drops are just better because they have something that actually helps out your cause in what you're trying to do. But as a generic... Uh, dude with no ability is pretty good. I mean, a free one for two is not bad at all, but I just don't want him in this deck because I don't need his extra power because I'm going to be enchanting my dudes. All I want is that the dudes I enchant have nice abilities that work well with being enchanted. So, this guy doesn't cut it. We've got Daybreak Coronets here, and actually I'll talk about this together with the Crater Oromancy because personally I feel that you can't run Daybreak Coronet and Crater Oromancy in the deck it's got to be either or. You either run the Greater Oromancy or the Daybreak Coronet. The reason is, Daybreak Coronet says other enchantments you control have Shroud, enchanted creatures you control have Shroud, and Daybreak Coronet says enchanted creature with another aura attached to it. So, it doesn't work well together. <laughs> um, I mean, you could, could get into these situations where you have a dude enchanted with an aura and, a, and Daybreak Coronet on it, and then you draw the Greater Oromancy, or then you finally play it. But, I mean, that is a very, very borderline case, and in that case, they probably didn't have removal for a whole lot of time, and you're probably killing them in shorter order, so it's only relevant if they were ha would happen to draw removal, um, you know, that turn after you play the Greater Ormancy most of the time, I guess. So, 
Um, personally, I think that uh, you know this this just doesn't really work well with the deck in general. Even when discounting the Daybreak Cornets, because you could like run Crater Ormancy in Lifelink and drop Daybreak Cornets. That would be an option, right? Um, but personally, I feel like the Greater Ormancy just doesn't work well enough in this deck because usually, even without the Daybreak Cornet, you do want to put uh, two Auras on a dude a lot of the time. So uh, I just I just don't really like it that much. And the thing is, they can kill your guy while you're trying to enchant it. They can kill it in response to the Greater Ormancy coming onto the battlefield. It it just bothers me more than it bothers my opponent. I think. So, I don't really like the card that much. Um, but it was certainly one of those cards that when it came out, I was like, well, I can see this working, I can see it being horrible, let's test it. So, you know, after testing, that's that's my opinion on the card. Um, so here we've got Spirit Mantle, and um, I, I think we can discuss this together with Divine Favor here. I like Spirit Mantle slightly more than Divine Favor. This is also something I had to test to see which one of these do I actually like more. Um, I think before uh, before the promos came out, I was just running all of it. <laughs> I was running the Divine Favors and I was running the Spirit Mantles. But now uh, there's just room for two, and I think Spirit Mantle is slightly better. Um, they both give your guide plus one power. Uh, the toughness is usually not super relevant. Um, this, this thing gains you free life when it enters the battlefield. This thing gives you dude protection from creatures. And uh, they're both quite relevant. I mean, gaining free life against an aggressive deck while you're just trying to set up is pretty nice. Um, but giving your dude protection from creatures is also pretty nice, especially in like uh, mirror matches with another aura deck. Uh, and then being able to just fly by their uh, their block, their um, uh, what are they called? The uh, Dawn Elemental or the Seraph of Dawn is pretty pretty cool. So um, yeah, that's basically it. You want. Uh, I, I think Spirit Mantle is slightly better than Divine Favor, but it's a pretty close one there. Um, so here we move on. We've got all the pacifisms in the deck. Obviously, it's removal. You want all of these. And it, they're aura, so they trigger um, with they trigger with Core Spear Dancer and they trigger with Mesa Enchan Enchantress to draw your card. Uh, yeah, you want all of them. Simple as that. So we've got these staffs here uh, that I'm not running. They are pretty bad. And any deck that has staffs, I'm not running them. I could see them working in Two-Headed Giant or something like that. I don't know. I don't like them in this deck. Um, although, actually, they're whenever you cast. So they don't even help when there's multiple guys casting stuff. Now, I just don't like these. <laughs> I think they're even worse than the uh, Lucky Charms things that, that were in the game games previously. I just I think these are basically a waste of... Um, Wasted deck space, but anyways, let's let's just ignore it for now. We've got uh, Aura of Silence here. I'm also not running. Mm. A cigarette went out. All right, so we've got Aura of Silence here. Then I'm not running. Artifacts and enchantments. Your opponent's cast because two more to ca cast. Sacrifice, destroy target artifact or enchantment. So I can see this like working against a samurai deck. If they, you know, it helps against Gita, obviously. But, I mean, your deck is doing even more ridiculous and broken things. So, as long as you can get a guy out with a big enchantment on, and Gita isn't even that big of a problem, um, you can probably kill them before G Gita kills you. And there isn't really an artifact deck or an enchantment deck other than this deck, of course. Um, yeah, uh, there aren't a lot of artifacts and enchantments in the format, anyways. I just don't really see the point in running it. Uh, we've got Sarah's Boon. Uh, this just doesn't do a lot. I mean, plus one, plus two um, on on a dude doesn't do a whole lot, uh, especially in comparison with other enchantments. It just isn't that great. I mean, it kills a wonder up, a, a one toughness creature, I guess. But yeah, just not really see, seeing the point in uh, adding Sarah's Boon here in comparison with some of the other enchantments. Then we've got Dylan's Mage Mark, also pretty lousy. I mean, plus one, plus one, alright, I guess that's okay. Uh, <laughs> if you if you factor in the flash, it's sort of okay, I guess, as a combat trick. But you don't really care about, about uh, tricking the opponent with combat tricks or anything. You care about just dealing a lot of damage. And this certainly doesn't help there, giving your dude only plus one, plus one. So I don't really like it. 
we've got these idyllic tutors and uh, search your library for an enchantment card reveal it and put it into your hand and shuffle your library again the um, the idea about this deck especially after the promos is just the four cost enchantments because those just end the game in short order uh, and there are six of those so you got a pretty big chance of just drawing them you don't really need to tutor for them and this just you know it, it takes a turn to tutor for something against an aggressive deck I, I just don't like it that much um, I played around with the tutors a bit when the game first came out in this deck and I just don't really like them in this deck because I, I don't want to be spending turns tutoring for the enchantment uh, I need I want that enchantment in hand and I want to be uh, winning so if you ha have nothing but pretty good enchantments in the deck then you're probably drawing a pretty good enchantment rather than drawing this so you're pretty pretty much already happy anyways so I don't really see the need to tutor for stuff in this deck so I don't, I don't run the tutor stuff um, so the free drops I am running Nomad Myth Maker it's just another dude I mean, it has an ability that sometimes is relevant, but mostly it's just another dude to enchant up, and you want some early dudes that you can be enchanting up. And, uh, I mean, this thing at least has an ability, whereas uh, whereas Blade of the Six Pride, Pride doesn't. And sometimes, I mean, this guy sometimes just wins the game because you can return auras, and, uh, but mostly that's not the case. Mostly it's just the dude you can enchant, but yeah. We got Mesa and Chandra's here, more card draw whenever you cast an enchantment spell. The fact that it's an O2 only really matters if you can't enchant it. If you can't enchant it, you're usually pretty happy because you're drawing a card off of it. So uh, This guy, Skyhunter Skirmisher, really good card, ends the game quite fast, especially with those four cost cards I was mentioning. Um, <coughs> he, with the double strike, you can just make him huge with only one aura on it. He can, he can easily... Uh, kill people in one turn, so he's amazing. You want to run him. Oramans are also just a guy to enchant. Sometimes his ability does something. <laughs> I mean, it has an ability that sometimes does something. We've got Pariah here. Uh, since the only other removal in the deck is basically pacifism, uh, actually getting rid of something for good is pretty nice, and it stops them for one turn. So it gets rid of something, and it's basically a fog. And that's uh, if they immediately can tag in and get rid of the Pariah. Uh, and if you're playing against a deck that doesn't have any removal, it's quite nice with Dawn Elemental uh, or Seraph of the Sword. So, quite good there. Even against burn decks, if you put a ra pari Pariah on Dawn Elemental, they can't deal with it. Um, although you got to be worried about, I guess... Um, uh, boop, boop, boop. I guess you gotta be worried about Pongify in Dodge and Burn. <laughs> uh, so we got Griffin God here. It's a decent enchantment. I mean, it replaces the dude if they kill the dude in response, and it's still pretty big. I mean, with uh, with the Double Strike guy or with uh, Corpse Pair Dancer, it's pretty big. Mostly, it's just an aura that uh, if they kill your dude, if they don't do it immediately in response, then you get a two-two Griffin out of it, and I find it just just about good enough to run. We've got unquestioned authority here. When you enter the battlefield, draw a card. If you're play, playing this on a dude that draws a card when you cast an aura, you're drawing two cards. Pretty sweet. And it gives your dude protection. So I was I was debating on running this one, but you know, it, I think it has enough upside. And giving you dude protection is sometimes pretty relevant, so I think it's nice. Um, and it's another cheap aura. And you know, if nothing else, you can cast this quite cheap and, and at least trigger uh, Daybreak Cornet. Um, if you have 5 mana you can then cast Daybreak Cornet. So. Um, for the 4 drops here I'm simply running, first of all you gotta run all of these, the Armored Ascension and the Angelic Destiny. That's what the deck is about, that's the way the deck wins, uh, by dropping this on a dude and killing them in 1 or 2 turns. So that's all that, that you really care about. I mean, once you can get this out you pretty much win plus four plus four is huge and this is even huger so and the other stuff you I, I've considered these must run as well Dawn Elemental uh, prevent all combat damage uh, or all damage in fact and this is prevent all combat damage so this one is a little bit less good than uh, Dawn Elemental but you will got to run all three of them anyways so that pretty much already fills up my four drops and I don't want to run more four drops which is why I'm not running all of these other four drops here such as a Johnny's Chosen. Um, I 
think this is a pretty good card, but I, I think um, before the promos came out I was definitely running him and I was enjoying him a lot. But now it's all about just dropping an armored enchantion and winning that turn or winning the turn after. And if you can just get that done, then you don't really care if you get an extra dude out of dropping an aura. Um, once you're at 4 mana you want to do this instead, so... Um, it's definitely a strong card, I just... With the specific strategy of the armor dissensions and the Angelic Destiny, I don't really see its place in the deck. Um, so we've got... But, you know, it, it is good in an uh, enchantment deck, obviously, because getting more dudes to enchant is always nice. We've got Healer of the Pride, don't really see the point of running this guy in this deck. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not even running that many creatures, so what? is the point. We've got Seasoned Marshall here, um, yeah, also no point in running this, pretty bad card. Um, just a 2-2 two -two for 4 that has uh, an ability that is not really even that relevant to what this deck is trying to do. Um, I guess if they have a flyer you can tap it and attack. I'd obviously much rather have Spirit Mantle then, but whatever. We've got Sigil of the New Dawn. Whenever a creature is put into a grave your graveyard from the battlefield, you may pay two if you do return the card to your hand, which is actually quite nice for this deck. Um, but again, I want to just kill them turn four. Uh, but this does help, uh, you know. Obviously, if you run out of creatures to enchant, you're in trouble with an enchantment deck. So making sure that you don't run out of creatures is pretty nice with this card. The problem is there's a lot of exiling in the format and pacifism type effects and stuff and this doesn't really help against those so it helps against the stuff that kills you dudes, it doesn't help against other stuff so I don't really see this as foolproof but I think it's a nice card um, I just don't really uh, see its place with how many 4 drops I am running and what I want to do with those 4 drops. We've got indestructibility here which I guess works with Pariah but the fact there's only one indestructibility I don't know, um, and again, there's exile stuff, and uh, you know, I'd rather just kill him with an armor dissension at that point. Uh, we've got divine transformation, which is just bad. I mean, it's much, much worse than armor dissension or angelic destiny. So why would you ever play it? I have no idea. We've got free tether here. Uh, return each aura card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Only creatures can be enchanted this way really great card that I was running before all I got all of these uh, angelic destiny and armor dissensions now I'm not running it anymore um, it works really well if there's a bunch of auras in your graveyard obviously uh, I think the main problem is running out of dudes and not running out of auras but um, in those games where this does matter it's really really powerful uh, but again I want to kill them with armor dissensions and not go that super late uh, we've got uh, Totem Guide Heartbeast I'm not running. Uh, I would like to run this, but I just didn't really find room for it. I mean, it is nice because it's a dude and it's an aura. So that's... I, I like this best out of those uh, Tudor cards because this is a dude in itself. And I get to uh, have a dude on the board. So if I need a dude, I got a dude. If I need an aura, I got the aura. So that is, I think, really good. I just don't really see room to fit them in anywhere. Uh, with kind of the aggressive plan I have here and uh, that's kind of because this de deck needs to win against control decks as well and the only way you're going to do that is by killing them fast before they get to uh, the late game and uh, late game you're probably losing against control decks anyway so I don't really see that much of a point of trying to go late with this deck we could Dawn Strike Paddled in here, which is just not really good. You wouldn't want to run this, although Vigilance and Lifelink are both quite relevant. It's still a 5 cost dude that doesn't like chew or something up like Totem Guide Heartbeast does. It just doesn't compare to the other 5 cost stuff in the deck. We've got Sigil of the Empty Throne here, which uh, whenever you cast an enchantment spell, put a 4-4 White Angel creature with token with flying onto the battlefield. Again, it just doesn't make sense to add this when I'm running this many armor dissensions because if I have a dude out and I'm playing armor dissension on it I'm probably winning uh, and I don't need the 4-4 white angel creature unless they remove my guy in response to me playing armor dissension but then why wouldn't they just kill my dude before I get to play enchantments you know um, I, I mean this this is nice and you can go late game with it but I just don't see why you would really need to uh, when the game plan is the armor dissensions 
We've got free dreams here. Well, free armor dissensions. <laughs> you can get with that. It's not bad, but uh, it's not a dude. Um, and it requires me to tap out for a turn before I can then play my huge aura. I'd rather just have the aura in hand. I definitely can see the point of free dreams, but... Uh, yeah, and I'd rather play uh, Totem Guide Heart Beast, by the way. I, I prefer those over Free Dreams, just because it's a dude and an enchantment. And if you don't have dudes, then Free Dreams doesn't do anything. Uh, we've got, ev although I guess you can get free <laughs> pacifism with it. We've got Enge Evangelize here, which is just kind of weird. If they have a stupid 1-1, one -one, they're gonna give you the stupid 1-1. One -one. I mean... It's huge cost if you want to buy back it. I don't really, I don't really like it. Uh, so we've got out of the six drops, I am running Admonition Angel because sometimes you just need to remove something permanently, and Pacifism doesn't do that. Uh, I mean, in the mirror match, you kind of need this dude simply because uh, someone is going to get out the Dawn Elemental or Seraph of the Sword with Pariah on it or something like that, and. Eventually, uh, you know, you're both just sitting there and whoever draws Admonition Angel uh, first is going to win that game. So, you kind of need him there in the mirror match, but either, but even other than that, it's just a huge guy. And he can win games on his own. I think he is just good enough to uh, to add him to the deck. Even as a 6 man in a deck that doesn't even run 5 drops right now. Uh, we get Purity here. Uh, yeah, it's a huge 6-6 flyer. I mean... That's not bad, but it just doesn't stack up to Admonition Angel in what it does. Or Aura Touch Mage is also quite nice, but again doesn't stack up to Admi Admonition Angel. Um, even if you put a Armor Dissension on it, it's a 9-9, but this is a 6-6 Flyer that can get rid of stuff. Well, okay, it, it will be a 9-9 Flyer as well, but whatever. This thing can get rid of stuff. This has abilities. <laughs> We got Celestial Mantle here, which I just don't really... You don't really need to go this deep in the in the gaining of life. <laughs> um, yeah, you can probably kill them before you need to cast this. We got True Conviction, quite strong, I guess, but if you've got a lot of dudes out, then uh, I'd rather just have... I'd rather have like one or two dudes and enchantments than having a bunch of dudes out. And I guess, you know, if you have a bunch of dudes out, though, then True Conviction is strong, but... That's not really what this deck is trying to do, so um, I could see the point in like three, uh, a two-headed giant or something like that, but uh, in 1v1 certainly not. We've got Final Judgment here, Exile All Creatures. Uh, it's another one of those cards that I debated on for quite a while. Um, sometimes you do need mass removal, but I just don't really like it in this deck because I'm trying to enchant all my guys and having to mass remove my own guys is uh, pretty lousy for this deck. Uh, it's obviously strong in the mirror match and uh, it's pretty strong in some other cases as well. Uh, for instance against zombies it is super strong when they're just killing all your dudes and making a huge army themselves and you can final judgment and exile all their guys then come back with undying etc. So it's pretty strong there. Um, I think a deal breaker here is though that it's just totally useless against uh, dodge and burn almost always, so that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, so anyways, that is the build. I, I can see going quite a few ways with this deck, but I just want to kill people with the four cost enchantments. I think that is just the strongest thing this deck can do, because um, Armored Ascension is really, really strong. So I want to... I basically wanted to make my deck um, able to set that up as much as possible. So that's the way I run it. And uh, did I actually talk about Daybreak Hornet? I don't really... I talked about it in... Um, yeah, I talked about playing these versus Crater Ormans, but I didn't really talk about the card specifically. Uh, the fact that you need another aura uh, attached to it to be able to play this can be a deal breaker with this card. I just think it's um, really strong. Uh, giving a dude Vigilance and Lifelink is really, really powerful in an aura deck that can make huge dudes. The first strike is usually not really relevant though. Um, but yeah, this can win games, so I run it. So, that is the deck, and uh, we're going to get into some gameplay next with this deck. And I actually managed to get a 25 minute video of a deck build out. I'm getting faster with these, yay. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this video. My name is Nemo. My name will still be Nemo next time. See you then.